Hello everyone, I'm Alex, I'm your lab leader. Today I am chosen to make a quick video over that summarizes chapters 9 and 10, um, kind of mushes them together. 9 is about um, how to organize your body paragraphs, and then 10 is how to organize your intro and conclusion. So I'm going to start with your intro, just because that's how I have it written. So this handy dandy little chart was given to me by an English teacher long ago, and I think it's super helpful. Um, it shows you how best to organize your paper, starting with your broadest statements, coming to your narrowest points, your body, and then going from your narrowest points to your concluding broadest statement. Um, so in more detail, let's dig into what that means. So your broadest topic that you were going to start with after you have chosen your speech topic you're going to start with an attention getter. Your attention getter can be many things. Your book lists about eight or nine, I believe. So relate the topic to your audience. State the importance of your topic. You can startle your audience. Um, you can arouse curiosity in your audience. You can question the audience. At that point, you have to decide whether or not you want it to be a hypothetical question, meaning you don't want the answer, or say please raise your hand to answer this question, and that way your audience knows that you want an answer and a response from them. Another way to do it is you can begin with a quote, tell a story, and a story isn't just, you know, this happened and that happened. Um, stories should be so vivid in description that if I close my eyes, I should be able to imagine the picture that you're painting for me. And of course, you can always start with a visual aid. Um, videos and sound clips, there is a time restriction um, depending on how long the video is. So once you have your attention getter established and decided, we move on to revealing your topic and the purpose of the speech. So for this particular assignment, um, the purpose of your speech is to inform. There are only three purposes ever to a speech or a document or any form of media. It is to inform, persuade, or entertain. Um, in this case, we are talking about informing. So after you've revealed the topic of your speech and the purpose of your speech, you're going to establish your credibility and your goodwill. So why should I listen to you about whatever your topic is? What makes you an authority over me? That is your credibility statement. After all, you did research it, so that does give you an edge over myself. The last thing you're going to do in your introduction is you're going to preview your main points of the speech. If you were doing this as a paper, an essay instead of a speech, it would be called your thesis statement. Um, but in this case, you're just previewing your main points or body paragraphs. Then there's usually a connective. You could word your preview in such a way that it connects it well enough. There is a type of connective called an internal preview, so you would be previewing what's going to happen next. So that could be your connective if you word it correctly. Now we move on to the body and the main points of your speech. Um, you can go anywhere to five main body points. I don't suggest it because the more body um, and main points you use, the more confusing the speech can be. So I would stick to two to three really thought out and packed, um, well thought out and processed main points. Here I've got three as an example. So main point one, then you have your supporting material. There are three types of supporting material. You have examples, so your examples could be brief examples, extended examples, or hypothetical examples. Um, and you can have statistics. If you're going to use statistics, brush up on what the, the fancy math words that they use, so mean, median, mode. Occasionally you'll see what a bell, you'll see a bell curve. You should know what a bell curve is. Um, uh, we can talk about that at a later date if you want. Um, and then have another supporting material and then possibly an extra example to further support your main point. 
These all should relate back to your main point. Uh, try not to go off on tangents to keep your speech concise and followable. So then there's typically a connective here. As I mentioned before, there are different types of connectives. So connectives are just something within your speech that help transition to the next point that you're going to talk about. So I mentioned earlier that there's an pr internal preview. There are also internal summaries. So you can summarize what you just talked about saying, um, I just informed you on this, now let's talk about this. Um, you could also use a transition or you can use signposts. Signposts would be first, second, next, all in all, etc. Try to steer away from those. Um, we're in college now, so we can do a little better than that. Um, after your connective, you're going to do your main point number two, and that's going to have supporting materials, A and B, and some extra examples if you need it. Um, and then a connective, followed by main point number three, and its supporting materials and extra examples. There should not be too much, a too much discrepancy between how much information is in point, main point one versus two and three. Um, a lot of people organize it so that the main point that they have researched the most is at the top and then less and less, whereas a more effective speech, all three main points are equally flushed out and well supported. After we've talked about the body and the main points, we're going to go to your conclusion. So the way you start your conclusion is first you got to signal the end of the speech. Once you have done that, you want to reinforce or summarize your main points. Um, so you want to work your introduction backwards pretty much. So you just, for the reinforcement or summary of main points, just summarize what you've talked about, quick, sweet, simple, and then add any concluding thoughts. Um, you can end with a quote, a nice memorable image. You could also, if you started with a story up here in the t attention getter, a really effective way to close off your um, conclusion is with ending the story. Um, so if you're doing a sports one, um, a popular one that I often use as an example is you start narrating a basketball game or a baseball game and right at like the buzzer uh, moment you stop you give the body of this you give the rest of the speech and then you finish that story as to does the um, ball make it into the basket at the buzzer I don't know you decide the story and that's how you can conclude and it wraps it up your speech up in a nice little bow tie and present kind of a deal. Uh, so that is chapters 9 and 10, uh, con introduction through conclusion of your speech. Uh, if you have any questions, just email me and we can have a conversation about that. Thanks.